So we do a lot of Unify installs. We love their Wi-Fi, we love their switches, we love the management dashboard, it makes it very easy. We can self-host the controller, there's not a bunch of uh, licensing fees to make it you know, cost inhibitive to install these at scale for clients, so this is great. And many times clients host their own controllers uh, internally because they don't want any data leaving. And with the exception of the phone home, which you can sync hold, which I did a video about, uh, yeah, other than that, they've been really, really good. But that always brings me to the next question that comes up every time I talk about a project is, Tom, why isn't this at the head end of your project? Why don't you have a USG so you can complete the whole ecosystem and have a pretty dashboard with DPI and things in there? And let's talk about that. So with the Unify, I really like the Unifies. I love, like I said, all their other products, but they're USGs. Once you need more than just routing to get to the internet, um, they fall flat. And I mean very flat. The USG, even though we are talking about this one right here, this is the US, uh, the base USG, but the Pro and all the other ones have the same limitations, is let's say we want to add more than one IP address to one physical WAN port. That is a pretty normal feature when you buy a block of IPs from an ISP. Here's all the config. You got to make sure we get the uh, JSON file right, which, by the way, is not officially supported by them and not supported through uh, the UI at all. You have to get to the command line and do this. And I like how this write up, you know, a couple of the comments right here, even from five days ago. And this is November of 2019. Any update on the roadmap timeline for multiple IP interfa interfaces yet? Been watching uh, threads for four years, waiting patiently. No roadmap, no timeline, no comment. I know someone's going to point out that some developer who was working on the PFSense project now works for Ubiquity. Um, and I believe that happened maybe almost two years ago. I Clearly, they're not adding. If they're adding a feature, I don't know when they're doing it, um, uh, if they're doing it. That's the, one of the first problems you run into. Second, advanced routing features such as uh, selective routing and things like that. Nope. Uh, what about VPN? Surely you have OpenVPN and all of the other features in here because that's common. OpenVPN has been around a long time. Nope, that kind of falls flat too. They do have L2P for user VPNs, which also well, over here uh, can cause some issues as well. When you're doing, if you use USG VPN client, you'll find multiple users behind the same IP with L2P has a problem uh, because that's why that protocol is not as popular. But yeah, so there's another place it falls flat. Places it does do well. Routing. It does routing great. I don't think it's insecure. It, it routes. Um, it does have under the hood, but so to speak, somewhat obscured from you, Seracotta under hood for intrusion prevention, but that limits its speed. So you have to look at each model and whether or not uh, it has enough capacity to handle, not the routing speed, but if you want those intrusion detection on there. It does have the DPI dashboard, so you get some stati uh, statistics. That's cool. Um, that is a great feature. And the site-to-site -site VPN, if you have two of these in the same controller, one click site to site VPN, amazing. Great job. Hats off to the engineering behind that because it just works. Uh, I like that. So, uh, but that's one reason we don't use it is frequently we run into clients that need those advanced features. And like I said, it's just a problem uh, when it comes to the, the system. It just, it falls flat on that. So what about the Edge Router X? That must be an awesome router. Actually it is. Uh, I am very much like these, but the Edge Router has a uh, kind of a limitation and it is the fact that you have to learn the command line if you want to do the powerful features. Uh, no pretty dashboards in that, but it, you know, it doesn't tie into the Unify ecosystem in terms of it doesn't tie into there. Yes, it does have a UNMS dashboard, which is not as full featured as the Unify one, but yes, that's an option on there. And uh, if you're not familiar, it is a fork. So uh, Viata, I think they say it, is the system BIOS and Edge OS were forked from. So first you start with an open source product called, uh, I believe it was open source called Viata. BIOS is fully open source. It's a command line driven uh, network operating system, which is very powerful, but 100% command line driven. There's no uh, web UI or anything like there, but it's very, very powerful, very, very diverse. And same with Edge OS. It's very powerful, very diverse. They kind of put a basic web UI on top of it. And you know, here's a little history I can leave a link to for the fork and the history of it. And you can do a lot with it. So the edge router is not a bad choice. Uh, they, like I said, they think they make a great product um, and are very affordable. But if you're looking for things to do all from the web interface, well, that's where this may fall short. And one of the things I'll actually bring up because someone has asked about this the other day was I did a video on PF blocker and how it works with PF Sense and DNS ad blocking, blacklisting DNS mask configuration in here, once again, you're going to, uh, they have very specific uh, which ones it supports. Actually, it's kind of interesting because you can do this because they do run essentially Linux underneath. Uh, DNS mask blacklist tested on edge router, ER3, ERX. And uh, yeah, you can set the system because you're, you know, SSH into these and get to the command line and start configuring these things. And 
update them and things like that. So if you're fine and you're comfortable with the command line, and it, it's a good practice to learn network engineering um, if that's your day in, day out. But for some users, they go, you know, I just kind of want to be able to set something and have a web interface to make it a little easier and not do a lot of time custom configuring and writing scripts. So there's a good and bad with them. I, I don't dislike them as a product. I think they're quite good. But for people wanting the one-click easy setups, sorry, that's not for you. Now, the next one I have here is not something I know much about, but people ask me about this all the time. So I'm just going to give it an honorable mention is the Sophos XG Firewall. And I'm talking about the home edition. I know this is probably an older model. I don't even know if this is supported on here. This is something we pulled out of a client. This, this box, I just have it here as a prop. Um, but one of the things I don't like is one, Sophos XG is not open source. Uh, if it is, I couldn't find source code to it. Uh, uh, maybe parts, I know parts of it are. But one of the things right away is just to download it and use it as a home user, you have to activate it. And uh, you should receive an email shortly to, with your evaluation serial number. And I, I haven't gone through the process setting it up. I'm not likely to review the product. Uh, one of those, I don't have a use case for this. We don't really have any clients running it. I've talked to people that says they enjoy Sophos, they like Sophos, they think Sophos is great. Um, it is a closed source proprietary firewall, uh, but it does have some advanced features that's pretty cool. And I don't know of any known like major security problems with it, but I do lean towards open source firewalls. And it, one of the reasons I bring that up is right here. New discovery around Juniper backdoor raises more questions about the company. And these are one of those things that when you can't audit the source code and because it's becoming so much of a concern in the security world that we see all the source codes and businesses are realizing the reliance on code is absolutely, you know, it drives their business. It's not like, oh yeah, if the computers are down, we can't, you know, we'll just muddle through it, we'll go back to a paper process. If someone backdoors your company and uh, starts dealing intellectual property and other information right out, that is a huge concern. So it's scaring companies more and more with these closed source firewalls. So uh, take that for what it's worth, but I figured it's worth bringing it up and one of the reasons I'm so bullish on open source firewalls. Which brings me to the one on the bottom here. Save the best for last. So yes, I'm aware someone forked it in OpenSense and someone loves to ask that question every single time. I've briefly looked at OpenSense. We had some problems with it. Could have been my lack of knowledge and I've seen someone got mad at me. Even though I always say it could be my lack of knowledge, we couldn't make it do. Neither could the person using it who was had installed OpenSense numerous times, who then contacted us to help solve a VPN problem, who we couldn't get the routing to work in the way they wanted, which was some very specific, very advanced routing features. We took that same piece of hardware and loaded PFSense on it and it works fine. Now this is actually a NetGate PFSense PFSense box in front of me, um, but that's where PFSense to me really excels. It's fully open source, which means we can audit all the code. This makes companies very comfortable. And for those of you who say, but it's not ready for the prime time commercial. I did a video on this topic. Go over to Zip Recorders, an easy way to do this. Look for them hiring for PFSense engineers. When you see companies like MasterCard hiring, you're like, oh, they must be using it. So most large companies, um, by policy specifically, they will not disclose what things they're using. Matter of fact, this is an interesting facet of our business. When we do have done work with large companies, uh, they do not want, they, they even though they found us from YouTube, they say you may not use our company name or talk about projects you've done or even post that you use, that you do things uh, with us on, our, on your website. Can you, you know, be quiet about all that? And I'm fine with this. So I have worked with, you know, automotive suppliers and things like that. They don't want their stack talked about, but it's kind of funny because then they put things in ZipRecruiter like they're hiring for an engineer for whatever support so you can figure out what hardware to using. Um, but yes, this has been used in many commercial environments. One of the nice things about PFSense is you can go to the command line. It's fully open source. It's modular. So you can actually do a package update on an individual thing. And I covered this when there was an Nginx flaw um, that you could update Nginx individually on this, not have to wait for the company to respin a new version of PFSense for you to download and update. Um, they also expose more features. So they put in OpenVPN, and I mean like everything is exposed. And if you find some weird advanced use case that's not, all you have to do is they have a command line to pass further commands to uh, it from the web interface. I think this is kind of cool. This is at the bottom of a lot of the PFSense option boxes, like an advanced config where you can just push extra parameters if you have something that they didn't expose, but they expose so much to the web interface, uh, they kind of glue everything together in a really nice way between Sericata and everything else. And it's fully open source. It does not require that you go in and register some serial number, some license thing to phone home and activate your PFSense. So if something were to happen or they change policies in PFSense, the code itself is open. Uh, and therefore, if they were to try to close source it, not that they have any intentions of this, I'm just pointing out uh, if any of these other companies, if Sophos, for example, because it requires a serial number to do some type of activation, if they decide not to 
uh, honor that serial number, then your firewall turns into a pumpkin at midnight. This is my problem with a lot of commercial products is your reliance on them as a company and their policies to support this. Uh, people have asked me why I didn't support certain uh, companies that made Wi-Fi a number of years ago that I said, oh, cool, they have a free dashboard that you can't host and it's only their dashboard. They're going to charge for that. People are like, no, no, you should try this product. It's really cool. And then the company got bought and they charged for their dashboard. Shocker. And by the way, it's not easy to get them off the dashboard. Um, the, the device was designed to do that. So one of the reasons, like I said, I'm really bullish on the open source and the PFSense specifically. Uh, the company has been really tight with security. They don't monkey with things. So when they use OpenVPN, it is the standard OpenVPN. So you can use whatever OpenVPN client. And I've actually had some you know talks with other people about PFSense and the engineers actually at NetGate. And it's kind of funny when they've had problems connecting. And we did this. We had a trouble with uh, connecting to a 48. So uh, our client had a... Uh, OpenVPN, the endpoint that they needed to connect to, another business had a 48. Turns out 48 wasn't implementing something properly and it took an update from 48, who the engineers first just blamed us using some crappy open source product that was a direct quote <laughs> from from the people on the, not from 48 directly, but from the people on the other side. Um, and yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things we've done uh, working with the healthcare providers here in the Detroit area, they now have a document on how to set up, because uh, our clients are using IPsec VPNs to, I don't know what's on the other end, I'm less than clear, they're very vague about it, uh, but it's not PFSense, but now they support connecting PFSense to it. They have a document because we showed them how to get PFSense connected. Because PFSense, once again, fully using the open source standard for things or the documented standard for you know, IPsec VPNs, OpenVPN, how they're implementing things. Um, they're not trying to compile everything into one big monolithic. They're using each one of these projects and kind of pull them together in PFSense. I know someone's going to call me a fanboy, but if you notice, we're not even an official reseller for PFSense. Uh, I have no affiliate links. I buy direct at the same price you pay. Uh, I do that on purpose because their reseller program I didn't think was all that advantageous for me to join. So those are kind of my thoughts on some of the firewalls. Uh, this is, you know, like I said, PFSense is our go-to because it's so diverse. It can do super advanced, crazy routing things that sometimes, well, people need. Um, you don't need licenses for things like even HA or any of that. Uh, you can load PF Blocker. You can load Sericata. Uh, you can create a really strong UTM device, but I will admit it's missing the dashboard. Uh, so that is kind of not there. Now, the last little piece I'm going to give an honorable mention to, because I did a video on this, is Untangle. And also uh, hats off to them because I didn't have to go digging for prices. So Untangle is free, but they do have a home edition. What's the difference? So Untangle, people want the home edition because they want granular web filtering that requires a certificate to install. I'll leave a link to that video I did talking about that because more and more sites have moved towards moving uh, to an encrypted site. If you want to get granular, not DNS blocking, but granular, see what websites each individual computer is going to and create uh, per computer block list and do that advanced level filtering, that's where Untangle does have that built in. There's the free edition of Untangle, which you can just install, but then they have the paid edition, so you want that advanced filtering. That is something where it's just not great in PFSense between the dashboards being, you know, if you want that high DPI, lots of information, then PFSense does, has the ability to export the data out, but does not have native built-in high DPI. And then you have Untangle, which does have some nice dashboards. And I've done a full review of Untangle. And of course, I've done specifically the filtering, because this is a common request that people have, which by the way, isn't supported on either one of the Unifies or USGs, but is supported by many advanced firewalls, such as uh, your commercial products by Meraki and 48. So uh, Untangle for their home edition, they do have have this for like 50 bucks. And someone told me, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not planning on evaluating it, but I believe the home edition of Sophos has some granular filtering that you get with the home user edition, uh, as long as you agree to their home user licenses and things like that. And you know, like I said, Untangle is free, but those filtering features uh, do cost money. So take that for what it's worth um, and decide what your use case is on there. I'm per personally, like I said, biased towards open source overall. I try to use open source whenever possible. Uh, that's my preference. And someone's going to say it's because I'm cheap. It's actually no, because I care about security and care about code, uh, auditing the code. And I have no problems paying money and have donated money to open source projects and open source developers. Uh, some of them would just ask for, you know, as the quote unquote beer money and things like that. Uh, I have no problems uh, donating to these projects and helping these developers out. And I've even contacted and hired some of them for specialized projects um, when we needed code updated. So um, I like the fact that I have my hands on the code. That makes me very happy. So that's my background and love for open source. Hopefully this helps a little bit or maybe confuse you more about decisions. Uh, oh, and uh, 
I, I, don't ask me to review consumer routers. I don't use them. I, so I know that D-Link and Linksys are name companies. They have a bunch of products out there. I'm not going to do a comparison to them. I'm just not interested in them. I don't run them. So my comparisons would be like, uh, it has these features. I'd be reading off the box. I don't really do those. I like to talk about products we've used, products we've used in the field. That way I can give you a more subjective or more realistic answer to how it uses versus reading off the back of the box or reading in some forums to gain some understanding. Uh, that's why I mentioned Sophos. I see a lot of people talking about them. They seem to be happy about them, but I can't give you any real subjective answers on it because I never used it. Uh, I have zero clients using it. Um, the only client that was using it is we, that box is over there. We pulled it out and put PF Sense into uh, us all some really advanced advanced routing things that they needed and uh, it's, they've been really happy since we put it in. All right and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.